Computer Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015, brought to you by Mirantis. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everyone. Hello, we are live in Silicon Valley for theCUBE Silicon Angles flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jeff Frick. Our second day of coverage of the OpenStack Silicon Valley Conference, hashtag OpenStack SV, hashtag OSSV15. Join the conversation. Go to crowdshot.net slash OSSV15, where we have all the, all the uh, commentary there threaded on our, on our CrowdChat app. Built on the cloud, built on Amazon. Um, our next guest, Derek Collison, founder and CEO of AppSera. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Yeah, good to see you guys as well. Um, so you know cloud pretty well. You've been at VMware, you got your startup here. You've been guys, doing a lot of great work. Uh, first question is, you know, what's going on with the cloud? Is there a hybrid cloud out there? Um, is there a category? It, what does it mean? I mean, we know what public is. We see that every day, Amazon. We know what private cloud is. Is it connecting them as hybrid? Is hybrid cloud just an well, engineering I mean, issue? What's your take on this? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think, you know, similar to when no one knew what cloud was and they all started talking about it and we're trying to figure it out, we're in the same way um, I respect the hybrid cloud. The difference is, is everything is compressed, so people will figure it out. But to your point, I think people's version of hybrid cloud now is we have some apps running here and some apps running in a cloud and then never the two shall meet or, or talk or communicate. Um, what I think is interesting though is going forward, you know, we're going to look at a multi-cloud world where everything is actually put together. The problem right now and one of, in my opinion,'s barrier entries outside the obvious of security and trust, which AppSera was born to kind of instill in our customers, is people are expensive. It's the only thing in IT that's getting more expensive. And right now when people say, I've got Amazon and if I want to add in something else, I need to add more headcount. That understand how to port to that platform, that understand how to manage that platform. And that's very prohibitive. Yeah. But what's interesting is, is that, you know, it used to be around cost, you know, uh, it used to be around maybe geo footprint. My opinion is the, the, the battle for the cloud is, is around class of services. And yeah. it's a very different game. You know, Amazon is the 800 pound gorilla. So was Microsoft at one point in time. Now what's interesting from my perspective is, you know, I've heard of certain customers leaving, but the only reason they leave, it isn't leaving for cost. Amazon. Yeah, it isn't for cost. It's, ooh, I want to use Watson, that machine learning, in, you know, technology, because it really augments my app and drives business value. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, but what happened was, in my understanding, I could be wrong, but, is they had to pick all of the apps out of Amazon and then move them over, because they're like, we can't actually do two. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to converge and well, hopefully- Well, that is it. true. That is currently the case. You got to use Blue Mix, got to have some Watson bolted on onto Blue Mix. Yeah. Um, but that brings up the question that we were talking on the cube earlier here, at OpenStack, as it finds its home, it's kind of finding its swim lane. I don't think it truly has yet. Right. I mean, at first it was an alternative to Amazon. Now there's a, a workload issue going on. But the issue is, okay, I want to run certain things this way. I have built in infrastructure, I bought servers from Dell and HP. I got storage from EMC. I got some Oracle. I have a lot of stuff in my infrastructure. I want to run Amazon because it actually, you can reduce headcount by going to Amazon. No more system admins, DevOps, Ethos, yep. gets a developer platform. You can move the ball down the field. But at some point, you do need to meet in the middle. Yeah, so yeah absolutely. Talk do. about that dynamic of meeting in the middle as companies try to figure out, okay, I get some economic savings with Amazon, pretty obvious. Redshift is, is disrupting data warehouse market, yeah. cost-wise. But the headcount issue is one, the CapEx, OpEx issue is the other, and the other ones, I got developers and workloads. How do you tease that out? How do you talk to customers about those issues? Well, a lot of times, I mean, when we were up in Vancouver for the, the previous OpenStack uh, Summit, you know, our big value prop outside of the trusted cloud platform, which is what we drive, was you have this investment in OpenStack, how do you actually transition that seamlessly to multiple public cloud providers? And at least within Vancouver, you know, everyone was like, we have no clue how to do that, you know? Um, now, to be, you know, straightforward though, a lot of our customers, at least that we're talking to, they're like, yeah, we're going to do that. But first, let's figure out how to consolidate what we already have, right? We're in a CapEx cycle. We don't want to spend the CapEx. We want to try to figure out how to move those workloads to the cloud. Um, and, and can you help us do that? Or what technologies are out there? To your point about OpenStack not finding its swim lane, you know, I agree. It's it's just kind of gotten to that point where 
it's technically viable enough to maybe start running production workloads. And next thing you know, they, they take their their uh, eye off the rear view mirror and containers come and just fly straight past them. And so a lot of the themes I'm hearing around here is, no, no, we're still relevant. This is why, because we're Project Magnum and we're going to do this and do this with containers. And, you know, the only thing I can say is, is the, the technology cycles are compressing so fast. The things are moving so fast. Um, you know, it, and it, the it, use it, cases in the enterprise are completely different by enterprise. Oh yeah. And so that private cloud market seems robust right now. It but does, the and I think OpenStack's doing well. Some benefits. Yeah, I think OpenStack's doing well there. They're they're gaining momentum. It's still very complex. Companies like Marantos are doing well because they they help you figure out how to stand up this thing. Distributed systems are complex, right? Um, but when you look at that and you look at the the ways of simplification for cloud, and you go, all right, let's say I have Docker, the new tarball format for workloads. And I can try to figure out how to deploy it on an OpenStack thing here, maybe with Project Magnum, or I shoot it into Amazon or Google or DigitalOcean or I think maybe software support. What's what's easier yeah. for DevOps? And, and we've talked about this before. Yeah. If it's easier for DevOps, that's eventually going to win because that gets them to go. Yeah, and you mentioned it. containers and the technology cycles are shortening, which I agree. Yeah. And, if, and if people believe that to be true, containers really kind of telegraphs what's happening. A lightweight easy to stand up set of services. So the question I have for you is, if, if that's the case, and Kubernetes certainly on the orchestration side shows that as well, is OpenStack bloated? Are they too heavy? I mean, lightweight seems to be something that's a theme we're hearing in the, in the hallways. It's not on the tracks yet, but like, you're no, starting like to hear, I want a lightweight stand up, and also I want to work with my coexisting in investments. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree, and, and, and on this morning's panel, I just, talked about, you know, we can talk about container technology, it's, it's neat, it's fun to geek out about it. But I think what people might be missing is, is that everything wants to get faster, lighter, cheaper, better, all of that stuff, and to a point where it really can't, and it actually fundamentally changes the way you do things. That's the big yeah. wake up call. And right now we're at a point where people are starting to think about architecting systems by saying, I'll build just this much, and I'm going to assemble all the other pieces together. And so how you figure out how to be relevant in that world, I think, is applicable to OpenStack. I mean, like I said, the theme around, hey, containers are overhyped, but even if they are, we're relevant in a container-based world, it shows that they're all of a sudden going, hey, we, we feel like we're stuck out in the cold all of a sudden. So I got to ask you a question. We talked to Shang Liang earlier, CEO of Rancher Labs, yeah. xCloud.com guy, yeah. been around Web 1.0 infrastructure all the way up to the present. Smart so he's guy. He's pretty peaked up, PhD from Yale. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty smart. You get, to get in Yale, you got to be smart. Yeah. Um, but he had an interesting comment. I'm talking about containers. I asked him, what is the, what is the disruptive enabler? And then he said, and he's in the container business, containers aren't a radical disruption element. And I said, it's an accelerant. He's like, absolutely. So if you believe that containers are an accelerant, what is the underlying disruption happening in, in cloud? Yeah, I mean, and Chang and I talked about this on the panel this morning quite a bit. Um, you know, and he is, he's got a container company, you yeah. know, but every, you know, early technology paths, which as you know, I was as quite a part of, we use containers, we use that tech. Um, when you look at companies that we're looking at as bleeding edge, past the Google, but maybe like a Netflix, they were using very big AMIs and plugging kind of stuff together as a services oriented architecture. I think the big disruptor now is, is that if it's a container and it's extremely lightweight and there's a repository of them that are supported by the vendor, so I can build faster by building less and I assemble more, to me, and, and Shang and I have talked about this before, I said that's the disrupting thing that's happening. All the other technologies are really, in my opinion, just there to support that. I trend. love that line, building less, assembling more. That's mm -hmm. a great motto. That's yeah. a good sound bite and, we want to mark and, that. And so light that they're even disposable. I mean, people talk about containers, just so many of them that, that, that they can almost become disposable. They're so lightweight to build and implement. Oh yeah, it's very different. you can spin these things up and then tear them right down and and uh, you know we're getting to the point where you can spin the, them up and tear them down before anyone realizes that they might be there, right? To instantaneously respond to something, finish up whatever service level they need to, and then they can tear themselves down. And 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 again, that's in my opinion disruptive because that's really not possible with VMs. You're not going to figure out how to spin up a couple hundred VMs and then tear them down two minutes later because it's going to take you, you know. 10, 15 minutes, maybe at best, just to spin them up. Right. And then how are they going to coordinate? How are they going to actually figure out how to be trusted and, and driven by policy? Uh, again, part of AppSera's DNA. But with containers, right, think about it. They're sub one second. But I can tell you already that if you look at companies like Bromium, Simon Crosby, who we both know, 
uh, you know, he kind of touted microtask virtualization, which is they can spend thousands of those up a second. And again, the pattern and the disruption keeps going. And so right. if I can spin a thousand things up in a couple hundred milliseconds and have them kind of run very isolated, so we solve the security problems, we solve this other stuff, people's patterns begin to change about how they use it. And that's kind of the and big disruption. Big when, disruption you, right? when your behavior change, that's disruptive. Not as you just keep doing the same thing and doing it faster, right? So, Jerry, I got to ask you. You've been at VMware. You've seen the evolution. You're involved in some of the cloud thing, and like uh, former cloud guy at VMware, Jerry Chen, who's an investor in Docker. Oh, yeah. You guys have been there from the early days on the drawing board, if you will, yeah. of the VMware's view of the cloud. Obviously, they have their own uh, challenge. We'll hear more about that next week at VMworld. The people will be live uh, in San Francisco next week for for three days. Um, Azure's got a lot of traction in the VMware ecosystem. We've been noticing some, some signaling in the marketplace around that. VMware is trying to become a cloud player. Obviously there's some corporate issues around EMC and, and the Federation you know, with, the, with the Wall Street attack from the Elliott management. That, that aside, customers are going to have a lot of stuff. They're going to have multiple clouds, they're going to have Azure, Oracle, OpenStack, and you guys maybe and whatnot. What is the VMware plan in your mind? What should they be looking at? What should VMware be thinking about? Obviously we're going to hear about DevOps at the event, their little mini event going on. Are they doing the right things? Or should they be looking at something different? What's their, if you're at VMware, what would you do? Wow, that's a, that's a pretty loaded question, but I, I like <laughs> it. You guys always do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not privy to kind of the things that, that VMware is doing at, uh, to date, but I'm still friends with Kit and, and a lot of people over there. Um, what I think is, is kind of interesting, at least in my opinion, and again, they could, they could argue that I'm wrong, you know, we're here at an OpenStack conference. OpenStack exists because of VMware. Linux became extremely popular because of Microsoft. Their failure to, to adapt and actually change some of their models. And I just like Microsoft is really kind of, you know, uh, rebirthing itself and right. under Satya's lead with Azure and things like that is, is now all of a sudden people are starting to talk about it and Windows 10 is actually good stuff. I think VMware read the tea leaves and they're already down that path of, all right, how we become relevant in a container-based world and where Docker's important, where you know people are going to bridge you know, their VMware uh, technology investments from that to a public cloud. And, and I know Kit is the, is the one that I know, uh, but obviously there's a, a lot of talented people over there. Um, they read the tea leaves and I think they're on the right path. Um, but you gotta you gotta back up what you say, and I think one of the things I watched with Microsoft, who they went on a ten year turn where it was it was tough for them, right? Especially in the hearts and minds of of enterprises that were trying to do new things. Um, VMware's earlier in the cycle, and they're pushing. I think you guys, uh, and of course we'll be watching closely as well. Some of the announcements out of VMworld, yeah. which is still one of the best attended conferences ever, will really signal how much weight they've been putting behind the arrow of saying, we need to change, we need to adopt. It's not about the hypervisor, it's not about the management systems per se, it's about how do we enable businesses to go and faster. they have a in this good install base to build off of. They have, huge. They're in a good right. position. As, huge. The, as did Microsoft, so that when they made the turn, you know, they still have a huge customer base to go back to. Yeah, Windows 10, what, 75 million plus, you know, right. it's because 365, of, you know, as a subscription. So I got to ask you, sure. since you have an unopinionated uh, perspective, <laughs> uh, which we love the, the, your opinions here on theCUBE, of course, great insight and content. Uh, you wrote a tweet seven hours ago, Wait, want honest dialogue about where we are in the platform ecosystem and what it all means. Come by and listen with a link to your panel, yeah. also you're here on theCUBE Live, so let's go to it. But also you say, um, another quote um, that on the under the company handle, the unopinionated systems will win. Yeah. A ra reality check. Talk about the dynamics around platform wars in the ecosystem. Ecosystems are changing, developers are the lifeblood of ecosystems, APIs are the lifeblood of the ecosystem, and what, is, and what does unopinionated systems mean? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was part of the opinionated systems, right? To figure out how to deploy complex workloads by being very opinionated. Just hand me your application, I'll figure out everything else for you. And we were trying to solve a very specific problem around speeding up deployment. Problem is that wasn't the problem. It was the problem that was right in front of us. But the problem when you see the forest through the trees is you know, uh, embracing complex systems, driving trust. In the meantime, as we were going down our path and other path providers were going down their path, Something happened, it was called Docker. And guess what? Docker does not want the deployment system to have any opinions about what's running inside of it, right? It's a whole, everything's in the container, don't worry about it. And so, whether you agree with me or not, or my tweets, 
if you do a Google trend analysis between all of you know the technologies that are like pass providers and the word Docker, <laughs> you're going to see that they flatline. There's no competition, and Docker is very unopinionated. Meaning that, how about this, John? The better the better way to look at it is the opinion shifts back to the power of the developers, and that doesn't always work. But when you look at Docker, it's like, no, it's all about my opinion. I'm going to pick what version of Java and what you know app server and what this, what that, or whatever. I'm going to put all in this container and then I'm going to hand it to IT ops. And I just want you guys to run it. And so when you look at a platform that says, no, no, you hand me the app and I'll figure out all the pieces, those things are at, at odds, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, what FSER tries to do is say, we embrace both models, we could care less, but IT ops has to be empowered to say, well, we actually do care about what's inside of there. Does it have zero day exploits? Is it running yeah. the version that, you know, the, the company is blessed version of Java, whatever like that. And so being agile and being understand, I guess, how about this, where the opinion and, uh, has shifted is the important part. And when a platform is very opinionated about how you as a developer do something, those are the ones that I think are going to be kind of left behind. Yeah, because they My foreclose opinion. a lot of opportunity because they're projecting syntax onto yeah, the developer. So they developers. radically speed up, but they only speed up this much of the problem. And once the customer realizes that they're only actually helping with this much of the problem, they kind of scratch their head and they go, oh, well, all right, now what do we do? All right, talk about AppSair real quick. We got a break here, but I want you to get the, the, uh, the, the plug in. AppSair, what's going on with the company? Yeah. Headcount, strategy, positioning? Yeah, well, we, we've been uh, growing quite rapidly. We're uh, over 100 people now. We were only about 21 uh, less than a year ago. Um, no gray so, hairs yet, looking good there, you're looking. <laughs> oh no, they're there, <laughs> uh, they are there. Um, yeah, we're, we're driving the trusted cloud platform. All we really care about is multi-cloud, single policy framework. We just happen to run a lot of the enforcement points, like a scheduling algorithm and a runtime, although we're a founder of OCI and uh, a network layer. But they only exist to drive trust into a platform. And so we've talked even early on, three and a half years ago when we started a company, if you make a decision but you can't enforce it, you can't have trust. And so a lot of these things you're seeing is, oh, you know, policy says you can't do this, but you can, and then all of a sudden you get your name in the paper. So, so we're you guys are betting on complex systems, large scale, and trust. We're betting on, we're actually flipping the problem on its head. We're betting on a trusted cloud platform that embraces multi-cloud and complexity, or, or microservices, right? Yeah. The decomposition system, so. <laughs> the distributed computing, whatever you want to call it. Same one, <laughs> I've, I've known model. all the words. Free <laughs> computing, distributed computing. Customers just want solutions right now. They want, they want security, they want trust, they want to run at a very good price point. Yeah, and trust is, is something that's very hard to articulate, but you know when you don't have it. So. Okay, so final, final question. Sure. Amazon's disrupting data warehouse with Redshift. That's just one random example. What are you guys disrupting? What is the big disruption for you guys? Are you guys taking down a certain market problem? What, what disruption uh, are you guys doing? Yeah, essentially we are you know, all about deploying diverse workloads in a multi-cloud platform all with a policy-driven framework that actually enforces everything the same way on every public cloud provider and vSphere and OpenStack and bare metal. And so when you look at you know, the notion of saying, I want a uh, workload to actually maybe migrate or scale up and move, we literally do that in seconds with no code changes, nothing at all, and we embrace Docker natively. But we also embrace other workloads because it's a diverse world, right? All right. Derek. Collison, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Great to have your insight, and we'll debate anytime with any other player about hybrid cloud. Anytime you want to meet and get people all together, we're happy to broadcast that live. Insight here on theCUBE about the future of cloud. We'll be back with more from Silicon Valley after this short break. <laughs>